Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today I am prototyping a new tracking mechanism for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder build. Um, one of the weaker points of the build has always been that we depend on a third-party tracking mechanism uh, from eBay, and you can go out and buy that or whatever, and um, that always seems to, to work for most people. Um, but a lot of people have reached out to me and said, like, hey, man, like you should uh, do your own thing, and I'd buy it from you, or you could include it in the kit. And uh, a, while, a while back, I actually did... Uh, prototype a very simple mechanism. Um, I don't have it here with me, but I'll show you some video of it here uh, where it's just a half inch plate, uh, you know, sort of a nested half inch plate and it works really well. I mean, it's just a very simple, it's not a very elegant design um, and there's a couple of design flaws with it. Uh, one being that the bolt uh, hole is uh, right in the middle and it uh, can interfere with the tracking mechanism uh, knob. So I I, I decided I was going to go down the road of trying a two-bolt system. I've had people over the years um, uh, comment on two-bolt systems uh, for, for tracking, saying it's superior, and I'm starting to drink the Kool-Aid on that because I, I really do feel like maybe there's something to it. So um, I'm in the process now of building uh, another revolution, which I'm going to keep here in the shop, and I need a tracking mechanism. I've got this four-inch tracking wheel here that I got from Knife Grinder Park. Uh, Chaz over there is uh, doing some great work with his wheels. Um, I'm in the process, too, of trying to figure out how to have someone make those for me. We're still working on that. But uh, a very simple way to mount this, you know, just with a brass spacer, and uh, it goes, you know, hooks up to the, the, the mechanism itself, basically threads into it. In order for that to occur, though, you've got this, this bolt that needs, it's a half-inch 13 bolt, needs something really beefy to thread into, which is why I use half-inch plate in my last one. Um, however, the top piece, the piece that mounts to the, the tracking arm itself, doesn't need to be a half inch. It just it just looks goofy. It's not. Uh, it's just not the way I would like to see the revolution uh, move forward in its in its evolution. So and also you know quarter inch plate is more than uh, adequate for this system. It's just it takes a little bit of a fabrication. So we've got these little these little pieces. I, I went into CAD yesterday and I drew up this plate and these little. Uh, these little uh, brackets, these side brackets that kind of uh, weld on to this. And again, guys, this is just a prototyping process. And what I wanted to share with you is the process, you know, how I go through and make these pieces and then figure out, okay, can I make them uh, on my plasma table? And if I can, that means I can have them laser cut. And then also, what does it look like for the end user to fabricate it? And then ultimately, does it actually work? You know, those are all questions, you know, that are valid and, you know, how we have to play around with this. Many hours are spent doing this and it's, it is not um, many hours, many dollars, you know, lots of equipment and time and energy goes into this because, uh, you know, your first one right out of the gate, which is, this is the first uh, version of this tracking mechanism right out of the gate is isn't going to be perfect you know this one um i had a lot of issues with uh this is half inch plate um, the langmuir systems crossfire pro cuts half inch plate no problem it's uh it's it's a really great system and i'm really happy with that um so if you're interested in getting your own plasma table uh that's an awesome option um so when i cut when i designed this in cad yesterday and i cut it out i realized that it's just a little too uh, it's not wide enough here because th this piece here that needs to swing out and in, uh, this is what this bolt is going to thread into. If you can imagine, you need, you need some beef in, in there, and you also need to be able to uh, drill a hole through here. This, this is um, where the actual hinge mechanism will go. So you yeah, really, half inch is really the only option for this. There's not... Not a lot of, uh, you can't go any smaller than this, I would say. I, I wouldn't go any, any thinner than this. So you have those requirements and, and, you, and you want it to swing, you want, you know, you want it to move and, and you want it to be solid and all. And I kind of want it to look kind of cool. So, you know, I'm going through the process of actually working out the mechanics of this thing and then uh, figuring out, okay, is this a viable option? Um, it sits up on the, the top of the tracking arm like this. It needs to be able to shift and move a little bit. And then, obviously, it needs to be able to swing in and out. Uh, you, you understand that, I would imagine, how tracking works. 
So my process is, is, you know, I built my first one yesterday. I ran out of time. I realized, okay, this thing is not wide enough. I went back into CAD. I widened this and I came up with uh, this here. You've been watching me um, in the time lapses, just kind of put this thing together. And again, guys, it's a prototype. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a done deal yet, but it's the same concept. It's just a little bit wider. And when I cut the first half inch piece of plate, which is this guy, I realized uh, that's just simply way too short. I need it to, to drop down another quarter inch or so. Uh, and I think I have a winner here and, and, uh, there's, there's a couple of reasons why it's, it's, in my opinion, it's nice looking. It's not ugly. That's kind of a cool thing. But it also gives enough swing on the back side here. Um, a lot of tracking mechanisms right in this area, there's, a, there's an issue because these brackets, they, uh, they don't allow for this thing to turn this way. And a lot of people love to argue with me about this, but you need the mechanism to be able to turn left and right and, and also obviously this way. Uh, you don't turn this thing left or right like that very often, but if you want your tracking to work forwards and backwards, you want your belt to go forwards and backwards, you got to have this floating mechanism in place. It is simply the only way that you can do it. Um, trust me, I've tried a lot of different ways. But I, I, you also need to be able to have this thing swing in and out like this and slightly back because there's times like when you're using a surface condition, conditioning belt or a, a cork belt or a leather belt where if you don't have, you know, you're tracking just a little bit off that belt is warped a little, uh, which they tend to do. Um, this is really nice to have that backswing. So this allows for that. This, all, this mechanism keeps that, uh, this plate, the half inch face plate, which this bolt will thread into and the, the tracking wheel will be on, it will allow it to, to swing that way. In order to make all of this happen, there's a lot of little details in here because you got to be able to make this weldable, grindable, cuttable, all of those things. And, uh, you know, with the technology that I have access to, which is the Langmuir Systems Crossfire Pro, uh, I'm now seeing that it is very possible to dream something up within a single day, maybe a couple of hours, draw it up in Fusion 360, and then pro rapid prototype it uh, within a matter of you know, a couple hours, I had my first prototype, which is the, the ultimately the failure, which is this guy right here, uh, t just a little too thin. Again, I need another quarter inch on that thing. And um, working in CAD is great, but holding the piece in your hand, there's just no substitute for that, being able to do it. Would this work? Probably. It might be a little weak. Um, there's no need to, for it to be that small. So um, we will set that aside and, and leave that be. But for the most part, that's my process. And then as I, I, I will get into this a little bit deeper, we're going to uh, drill a hole here and tap it. It's a um, half inch 13 uh, hole, so it's a 27 64th bit, which is quite odd, but uh, that's how you, you do this. And then uh, this will be, we'll be able to thread this bolt in and use it for tracking. Uh, the next step for something like this would be to send these files off to uh, my guy in Dallas, who is a, um, uh, who owns the laser uh, cutter that cuts all the parts for the revolution and then have him cut these based on my drawings to see, okay, when he cuts them, his kerf might be slightly different and uh, we would want to compensate for that because you don't want a lot of play this way in this device. Again, all these things play a factor. If you've got too much space in between uh, these two brackets and this thing can, uh, can move like this, uh, you're going to have a bad time tracking. It's just really not going to work. So all these little minor details matter, especially with tracking. And, uh, you know, the process that I'm going through here every single day in my shop is to figure out, can I make this a viable, sellable component? Uh, you know, because this, this would work for just about any 2x72 belt grinder. You wouldn't need to uh, own a revolution for this to work. I mean, it would fit on any arm that you, if you wanted to make your own. And this, it could be a low cost option for people as long as they're willing to uh, drill the hole, tap the hole and, and uh, weld this, this device together. I mean, of course I could probably fabricate a whole bunch of these and sell them, but that's not the business I'm in. Uh, you know, I'm, I, that's not my thing and I'm not a fabricator and I don't want to sell parts like that already assembled. I, I really want to, you know, give, empower people at, for the low cost option of something that's, that will work 
and that they will learn something from. So they will have to have a piece of in it, you know, have a little bit of themselves in it, which is the whole point of the revolution build. You know, they're basically it's a kit you put it together but you have to work for it and do it yourself and make it happen so that's the point and that is my prototyping process for this uh i will um finish this and then uh work put it on the new revolution grinder that i'm building so we can give it a test run and an actual test run in the environment just to double check and then um i'll have to figure out if we can get these laser cut uh, down in dallas and then move forward from there that is my prototyping process for working with steel and it requires you know just a little bit of time and mental energy but you can literally do whatever you want with this technology you can make and design anything which i truly love so listen guys if you got something out of today's video make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button and if you click that little bell You'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways to support my channel. You can go on my website and uh, you can purchase stickers and other things, uh, parts, pieces, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder build. You can just simply watch my videos and hang out with me on Instagram. Uh, there's a lot of ways to support what I do right here in my workshop and studio. I want you to know I truly appreciate you guys supporting me. Thank you so much. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.